I do have a glorious leopard on a termite mound, the great Tumba, a.k.a. Bigglesworth the Big Ears, is sitting here on a termite mound, looking rather regal, I must say. Good morning, sir. How are you? Is he not magnificent? His mother is somewhere around here. I'm not sure where exactly. She apparently is also sitting on a termite mound, looking rather regal, and her kill somewhere in a tree not too far from here. But this little fellow, rather like Fergus and I this morning, decided that he would really quite like to have the sun on his face. He's slightly inconveniently got some grass in front of his face, which is not ideal, but you know, we'll put up with these things. Oh, he's very tired. Now, Bill, you're wondering why a male leopard would kill a female leopard. Well, that is a difficult one to answer, and I suspect you are referring to the unfortunate demise of Shiluva, the leopard of Buffel's Hook, who was unfortunately unceremoniously e dispatched and then eaten by Tingana, the dominant male of this area. Oh. Sorry, I thought he was going to leave us, so I thought we'd join him. Um, Bill, why he did that is really unclear. We are not sure. We do know that what she did was she mated with Tinga, um, with Mvula a few times before she was killed by Tingana. And so it, that might have had something to do with it, but how Tingana would have known that, how he would have had any idea that that had taken place, or uh, if she was carrying the offspring of a, a strange male leopard, is unclear. So I really don't know. Maybe he smelt Mvula on her. Maybe he had just had a fight with Mvula and uh, was in a sort of heightened state of tension and, you know, just was sort of, you know, there's always conflict between male and female leopards. It's always a tense meeting. Maybe just bubbled over into violence in the same way that it uh, sometimes does when male lions come across females, especially sort of young males and females if, there is, if there's a pride takeover or a coalition takeover going on. So I don't know the answer to that. I don't think anyone does really, and I think it's really quite an interesting thing to think about and discuss. But we could postulate on the reasons for days, I suspect, and come no closer to the actual truth. He's rather special, isn't he? Oh, that's great. Hello, boy. There's something very regal about these cats. Madison, you say it's gorgeous. It is absolutely delightfully gorgeous. And the light could not be more perfect. And that, of course, means... Well, that's not doesn't mean anything. It's just because the sun is in the perfect position in the sky. Now we'll sit here just for a little while and then I think we'll try and find Mum just to figure out where she is, especially if this chap is going to do as much sleeping as he seems to be doing now. Oh, he looks like he's going to fall over. Yes, ladybugs and daisies, I, I, I agree with you, but I'm not sure that I agree with the sentiment you've expressed. You say he looks like he's growing into his ears nicely. 
Unfortunately, I, I agree. He does look like he's growing into his ears nicely. I just really like the fact that he had those <laughs> outlandishly sized ears. I thought that was wonderful. And now, unfortunately, them ears is normal sized. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> he's so happy and content up there, isn't he? <laughs> Colin, you're just nine years old, and you're wondering if young Tumba here purrs like your cat. No, Tumba doesn't purr. Colin, he's got a different kind of a voice box. Now, if you touch your neck, what I'd like you to do is re re lift your hand and touch your neck, and you can feel a hard bit just below your chin. Now, that hard bit, somewhere just behind there, is your voice box, <coughs> and that is how you speak, and your cat has the same thing, and Tumba has the same thing. But Tumba's is attached to his, well, how do I describe this? It's attached in his body, if you like, in a different way from the way that your cat's is attached. And what that means is that he can't make a purring sound. When he purrs, it doesn't sound like a purr at all. It sounds like a terrifying growl. He makes a very loud growling noise. Even though he looks very sweet, and he is very sweet, he will make a very loud growling sound. And that's because his voice box is different from your cat's. He's such a sleepy fellow. Right, everybody, just before we lose this great light, I'm going to suggest we go and see if we can't find his mum. I think she's just around the corner, and I just want to establish where she is before the other chap moves out of here. So if it's all the same to you, we're going to leave him for now. We will definitely come back if Mum is not around. I just want to establish where the kill is and figure out exactly what's going on out here, because right now we're completely alone over here, which is wonderful. Ah, she's just over here, actually. Ease our way down through here. Whoops, the daisies, nasty bumping. Uh, now, Adele, you're wondering if Tandy could be pregnant again. It's highly unlikely. Tumba, as far as I'm aware, is eight or nine months old. And at eight or nine months, he, he is still dependent on her, still living in her territory, and therefore highly unlikely that she is going to be pregnant again. Now, one of the things, or one of the reasons we think that Shadow has had such difficulty raising cubs, uh, she's in over here, is, I think she's over here, is that she keeps coming into estrus, I think, you know, round about when her cubs are about the age of Tumba, and then she kind of abandons them, and that's half the reason I think she's been so unsuccessful as a mother, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Shadow, because she's, of course, Tandi's sister, Assuming she's up this way. Yes, there she is. You see her, Ferg? <laughs> there she is. She's miles away down there. That's quite fun. Again, just look how many leopards we are missing every time we drive around the bush. Let's go towards her. I don't know where Achille is. I'm assuming it's up here in a tree somewhere. Ah. Now, John, you're in Kent in the United Kingdom, and you ask a nice question about the size of leopards, and you say, what's the biggest leopard I've seen? Um, I don't know. 
I think Tingana must come close. I believe the Anderson male's bigger. Um, I don't think Mvula is quite as big. He's the ma other male here. Uh, the Campan male of X of Londolozi used to be pretty big. The kill is not in the tree here anymore. Was it in the tree no, before? It was on the ground. Uh, yeah, before. Okay. So just 